Hello everyone, welcome back. Now let's discuss about one tail and two tail test. So when you want to decide whether it's a one tail test or a two tail test, all you have to do is look at your alternate hypothesis. So whenever you have not equal to, it will be a two tail test. So you don't know whether to look on the left side or the right side, whether to test it for greater than or less than. So that's why you test both the tails and your p value lies in both the tails and that's why whenever you want to compare your p value here you compare it with alpha divided by 2 or half of alpha alpha is nothing but a significance level so we usually set alpha to be 0.05 so what you will do is you will do 0.025 and you will compare it with p value so that's what is the difference for two tail test and that's how you can decide whether it's a two tail test or not now for one tail test so both these conditions when you have less than or greater than in these cases you will do one tail test and uh, more specifically this one is the left tail test and this one is the right tail test so how to remember so you whenever you have less than sign or it is pointing in the leftward direction so that's what will tell you it's a left tail test and uh, your p-value will lie in this area and again in this case you don't really have to divide it by two because you are just testing one tail so whatever is your significance level you will compare it with your p-value and in case of uh, right tail test your p-value will lie on the right tail and again here also you will compare your p-value with alpha and not alpha divided by two so I hope this makes sense and if you see some other books you might not uh, see this greater than or less than equal to they might just use equal to in both the cases or all the cases so that's why you should not get confused if I'm using greater than or equal to here and uh, less than or equal to here so this can be anything in a null hypothesis and uh, you just need to see your alternate hypothesis to decide whether it's a one tail or two tail test so when you have hypothesis it's easy to tell whether it's a one tail or two tail test but when you have a business problem when you are doing hypothesis testing on your own in that case how to decide whether we should do one tail or two tail tests in that case it's again very much dependent on what you want to test so if you just want if you're working for a medical firm and if you have developed a new medicine and you want to test uh, whether this medicine is performing similar to the previous one or is it performing differently so in this case again you don't know whether it will be more effective or less effective so in that case you will do a two tail test just to see whether they are different or not now that you have done your test and you realize yes they are different then you can probably go for one tail test where you will decide whether it's a better medicine or it's a worse medicine so in that case you can do one tail test so that's how you can probably decide whether to do one tail or two tail test when you have a business problem at hand so i hope you were able to understand the difference between one tail and two tail test and now i think we have covered all the basic stuff that we need to know about hypothesis testing so in the next section, I will actually take a problem from Boston dataset and we will try to do hypothesis testing on uh, several different use cases and uh, we'll try to learn it in a more practical way. So yeah, hope to see you in the next one. Happy learning.